Well, hello there. Ever wondered what those icy fingers of death were in the game? Well, they're a real phenomenon called brinicles, and they are deadly. Keep watching till the end of the video to find out what they are and how they work. Welcome back to a marine biologist's place of Norska Below Zero. In this video, we're going to learn all about the Arctic and Antarctic regions while we explore the terrestrial or terra bases. If you're new here, my name is Ben. I'll use my Masters in Tropical Marine Biology to dissect the game and its realism. I upload new videos every week, so subscribe not to miss out on that sweet ocean knowledge from my Marine Biologist Place of Nautica series. If you missed my previous videos, you can click the top right hand corner now to see them. If not, let's get right into the video. Okay, so we're going to be starting with Thesa Station, which is north. So what you want to do, make sure that you have the prawn suit and the docking module before you visit these areas because there will be opportunities to mine heavy metals on these land masses. Since the first base we're looking at is northern, we will start with the Arctic region as that's situated at the North Pole. The Arctic is 700 kilometers from the nearest land mass it goes for a maximum of 2 meters above sea level it ranges from positive 13 degrees to negative 46 degrees celsius or 43 degrees celsius uh, it's actually less biodiverse than antarctica however it's made up of more sub biomes like mountains grass plains and tundra tundra is a biome where you have plant life, you have soil, so unlike straight ice like in the game, plants can grow there, but only the hardiest plants, there's about 10 to 16 centimetres of rainfall per year, so there's only a very short growth period, so therefore there isn't enough water or enough soil for any trees to take root, and that's why you get grass plains and kind of shrub-like plants. Ion cube. Have your scanner handy. You'll need it. It would have been nice to see more terrestrial arctic critters. In the real arctic there are many species that make up the food web. Um, you don't just have top tier predators like the snow stalker in here or like you wouldn't just find only polar bears, they need things to eat. Um, and uh, there'd be other smaller predators as well. So in the real arctic there's this cute creature called the lemming, an arctic lemming, they're like a, a rodent. These are probably the most important species within the whole ecosystem, or one of them. The arctic lemming consumes large swaths of vegetation, which keeps it in check. They reproduce rapidly, and therefore they provide a valuable food source to four very important arctic predators, like the snowy owl, the long-tailed skewer, short-tailed weasel, and the arctic fox and without those uh, the whole thing would just fall apart and then obviously your polar bears and your snow stalkers would eat those uh, primary predators and obviously the polar bears and that would be your secondary or tertiary predators on the food web so the snow stalker resembles a canine type creature however this says it's a bear-like evolutionary offshoot, uh, which makes me think it's meant to be some kind of tantamount to the polar bear, which does make sense. They would be the apex predator. Um, in the real Arctic, you get like more of a range of terrestrial animals, like the Arctic fox, for example, as another predator, and a bunch of prey species. 
As polar bears could predate on quite a few species like ringed seals and beluga whales, it would have been nice to see a more variety of terrestrial polar species. But hey, you know, that was probably too much effort. It would have been nice to see something tantamount to a, a seal. Maybe the sea monkey comes close, but the sea monkey is an obligate marine aquatic animal and not uh, an air breather. Whereas seals are air breathers, they can hold their breath for about 45 minutes. It's far longer than uh, any human. The record for a human is 21 minutes. So what seals do is they carve these holes in the ice and they come up for air obviously every 45 minutes and uh, there can be like hundreds of these holes in the ice and what polar bears will do is stand outside uh, these holes and the seals can't tell if there's a bear there or not and it's just luck of the draw they might get yanked out and mauled to death by a polar bear and they might not uh, the seals also create burrows where they have their pups and uh, polar bears can actually sniff out these burrows and they'll try and collapse them and uh, dig their way into them to get the seal pup but usually there's a, a hole within the burrow as well so the seal can escape into the water but yeah if there's a dodgy whale or a dodgy seal or something, the polar bears can lift up to 900 kilograms, so it's not looking fantastic for them. Okay, before you head off to fire station, to extend the bridge you'll need to take some hydraulic fluid with you. To build that you'll need a creep mine seed cluster and four gel sacks. So I'm going to make that here, hydraulic fluid, and there's some tasty bits in there, so we'll also want to bring an iron cube. Let's bring two for safety. Okay, so after we've visited Outpost Theta up north, we will then head toward Outpost Phi which is southwest of Theta, or if you went back to your base first, it'll be due west. I'm most of the way there, so you'll pass through a kelp forest and then you'll see this bare bottom area. I've got some rays, some peepers, a shoal of boomerangs. All right, so head in here. You'll know if you're in the right place because you'll see these eye jellies. If we head up to one. This is quite cool. It's a jellyfish with a proper humanoid eye. I want to say this is sort of realistic because although it's a complex eye, like this is useless without a brain to process it and do something with the information. However, the box jellyfish, Sharon X Flickeri, actually has 24 eyes and four of which are humanoid like this one. You can't see them, but they're situated at the four parts of the box on the body. And although they don't have a brain, they can use their eyes to navigate opaque objects. So there's research that happened with them inside a uh, a tank where they put these opaque obstacles and they actually swam around them but when the obstacles were transparent so visible to us but not to them they crashed into them super interesting right now around here so there's a river up here oh yeah there we go there is the beginning of the base This is the part where you definitely want your um, prawn suit. And that is because there are some valuables that we can mine uh, around this, this area. So, well, hop in the prawn, immediately hit the cluster. There we go, end up up here. 
The prawn will shield you from the cold until we get the cold suit. So you can hop out, you can get stuff. Okie doke, so there's going to be some interesting bits to explore. We can go down there later, because it's quite a big area. We want to head up here, the path illuminated by light sticks. We're going to find a bridge, like so. It won't be extended, but we can fix that. There is something of significance beyond this bridge. It was important to Altera, but more Scan this. Will it help us build your body? I believe so. To make the hydraulic fluid, creep vine cluster and four gel sacks. So I'll have to go and get those and come back very annoyingly. Right, so coming up from the sea truck up here, uh, before you extend the bridge, come this way. This is where fire base is. Beacon detected nearby. Unique identifier. Fire robotics center. So we want to pick up these frost vase plant. Fly robotics. This is where Sam worked. Snowfox hover pad. Uh, that makes the snowfox, which is a hover bike for the snow. Thank you, Pit. All right. So those brinicles that I talked about at the beginning of the episode, I waited until now to explain them because they are an Antarctic phenomenon and not an Arctic. So what are they? Why do they occur? So what it is, is actually a hypersaline solution that is colder than the water sinks down. Now this occurs because, hit extend, it occurs because water freezes, uh, when water freezes, like pure water freezes at zero degrees, but salt water freezes at much lower, so like minus 20, water. minus 30, something like that. And the lucky ones do. When it freezes, it reaches these really cold temperatures, like below zero. The salt 
actually separates from the water. So the frozen ice at the top and ice shelf is actually relatively pure water. Then you get a hypersaline solution build up underneath the ice shelf. This eventually gets too heavy and the hypersaline solution sinks and it's colder than the surrounding water, which is relatively pure or at least less saline than what's falling down. So then it freezes everything around it and it moves down like a finger like projection. And when it comes into contact with stuff, like see the picture, uh, it's touching a load of starfish, they're literally getting frozen alive in, within this icy finger and it can continue to grow. Oh yeah, actually I like that analogy. Makes it hard to get along. This must have been Sam's room. But something's not right. Hi, you. How's everything at Pengling Central? <laughs> oh, fine. But I haven't heard anything since giving the footage to Zeta. It's been, what, a week? Did she promise you a report? No, but I expected some kind of reaction. Maybe I should take it up with Emmanuel. It is Kara, after all, and it could cause a lot of suffering if it got out. Why would it get out? We have professional containment and know how to neutralize it in an emergency. Sam, I love you, but you don't know what you're talking about. You love me? Wait, why do you know so much about this? It's my area of research. Why are you being evasive? <sighs> oh, I'm gonna tell you something. And then you have to drop this crusade you're on before you damage your career. We're researching the bacteria. What kind of research are you doing? I don't want you worrying about this. We are aware of the possible downsides, but they're far outweighed by the potential. That's as much as I can tell you. <sighs> Sam. I, I need to think. I have to go. brought a friend. Spy Pangling in training. We're recording audio, is that okay? Of course. I have the photos you sent. Um, what am I looking at here? Kara pustules on the frozen Leviathan. That's nothing to worry about in and of itself. It's well contained. The ice samples suggest it's been frozen since the time of the outbreak. The strain made the planet uninhabitable. If it mutates... Are you feeling unsafe? Very. So remember to explore and scan everything you while you listen to the to concentrate again? story. I have deadlines for the snow fox and the mining bots coming up. I really need your focus on the penguins. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, I'm so glad you're here. Where else would I be? Like I'd miss Fred being exposed as the alien intruder. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. But you didn't say you were not the intruder. No argument again I beg you I think the game will settle this debate <sighs> so I just want to ask you something quick before Zeta gets back and we start playing it's about the cat <laughs> with the frozen leviathan I investigated and you investigated when I didn't see you maybe you were asleep or busy talking inappropriate sea creatures those drawings
I'm going to go put everything I've collected in the sea truck. So the space I have is free for all the goodies that are here. Oh yeah, while we're here, if we can, we'll build the spy pingling. Without spy penglings, scientists may have never discovered that penglings incubate their eggs in small cave burrows, often alongside thermal lily rubes. Okay, so now we have the spy pengling. I built it. So if we look at the map, there's two bits of interest here. There's the uh, Spy Penglin research kind of mission where you discover what happened to Sam's sister. And then further up north, there is uh, a piece of Alan. So we'll go up north first. So there's also a really big cache of iron cubes, which is just super handy. So the cabling tells us the architect base is near. I'm pretty sure the cache of goodies is around here too. Oh, so these things represent a opportunity for spy pengling research. I'm gonna drop that and sign. This isn't the cache of goodies, but certainly won't complain about these. Let's 
This Bio Penguin can only carry four items, but that's fine. Don't really need much more than that. While you don't have the cold suit, you will need to be quick. Is that cache of uh, goodies that I said. So an Antarctic food web is actually super different from an Arctic food web. For a start, the biggest Antarctic land animal is only 1.7 centimeters. Hang on a minute, penguins, seals and that, not land animals. Um, so a lot of marine animals, penguins, seals, etc. spend some of their time or a lot of their time on land on Antarctica but not all of it. Seals obviously uh, go in the water to hunt penguins. Penguins go in the water to hunt fish. Penguins, super interesting, they actually go weeks on end without eating so a penguin will, a uh, female will go to the ocean, eat some fish not digest the fish for a couple of weeks, bring it back in its stomach to the penguin colony and then regurgitate it into the penguin baby's mouth. Tasty. Antarctica is also home to a lot of birds like uh, puffins and petrels, albatross and petrels. Smoking stalkers can't really hurt you in the suit. I'll just ignore them. We're just going to go a little further north east. There is a good reason because we'll find this a scannable snow worm, ice worm. An extremely large, dangerous leviathan, roughly 95 meters long with a thick plated exoskeleton that burrows through dense ice shelves with minimal resistance. Okay, um, and no. Ice is just so thick. Something this big, you know, the front of it would have to be a drill to get through the ice. 
even if that thing was like red hot, you know, you're not just burrowing through ice with relative ease. It's too dense, it's too thick. The kind of tunnels that it would have to go through would have to be cut, painstakingly carved out and they'd likely refreeze again. The water would have nowhere to go. It wouldn't evaporate, it would just refreeze. So no, that wouldn't happen. That thing couldn't exist. It could be like a terrestrial Dangerous sliding worm that Take stayed shelter. on the surface. That might be plausible, it just might go around eating snow stalkers. Large emerald. Ooh, tasty. Now, usually you can scan this stuff. Architect component there. Architect's ah, tissue. That is a rough way to go. Yes, I would not enjoy being crushed while mining iron cube components. The cold preserved the body well, but this isn't a big sample. Will it be enough? Our tissues are pluripotent, derived from the DNA of various species, capable of changing form as necessary. Ah, like stem cells. So, what prevents you from, I don't know, ending up with hooves where your eyelashes should go? That does not happen. At least not since the fourth iteration. And that will probably do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. Comment to let me know what was most interesting if you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe not to let me know if the video was good. Uh, subscribe not to miss out on that juicy ocean knowledge. There will be more coming next week. Have a good day guys. Thank you for watching.